Good day to you. Hope you're having a wonderful day. We are reading in the book of Revelation. Now last time we read chapter 10. And at the end of chapter 10, John, well let me read this to you. John took this little book or scroll from the angel and ate it. So I took the little book from the angel's hand and ate it. And in my mouth it was as sweet as honey. But once I had swallowed it, my stomach was bitter. Then they said to me, You must prophesy again concerning many peoples and nations and languages and kings. And see, he had taken this. This was the, this is the word of God, which is sweet. You know, the word of God is um, sweet. It speaks of our salvation, and, and it, it has all this goodness and greatness to it. So this tasted sweet. However, this too became bitter for him because of the, you know, the impending judgment, too, that is coming to non-believers. You know, so there was, it was sweet and wonderful in its own way, but then, you know, he felt sorrow and, and for, for non-believers, people who judgment was coming upon. Now, I admit that that is kind of an interpretation, so um, I, I don't want to get into speculation, and I apologize for that, but I mean... I, when I read this, that's what that means to me, and that's how I took that. That, um, you know, this this is the revelation again of Jesus. This has wonderful, wonderful things to us as Christians. This means a lot. It means everything, really, because um, it it shows how we're going to be in heaven and how Jesus wins, and you know, it shows the end of things. You know, being correct, but there is. There is this sadness to it where, you know, non-believers, people who refuse to believe and refuse to believe in God are, are not going to share in the same, um, the same wonderfulness that, that Christians are. And we, we really want them all there. We want them all to be in our number. We don't want anyone to go through the judgments, the bad things. All right, so we are ready to read. Chapter 11, and I am reading from the Amplified Bible. Then there was given to me a measuring rod like a staff, and someone said, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar of incense, and count those who worship in it. But leave out the court of the Gentiles, which is outside the temple, and do not measure it, because it has been given to the Gentiles, the nations, and they will trample the holy city for forty-two months three and a half years. And I will grant authority to my two witnesses and they will prophesy for 1260 days, 42 months, three and a half years again, dressed in sackcloth. These witnesses are the two olive trees and the two lampstands which stand before the Lord of the earth. And if anyone wants to harm them, fire comes out of their mouth and devours their enemies. So if anyone wants to harm them, he must be killed in this way. These two witnesses have the power from God to shut up the sky, so that no rain will fall during the days of their prophesying regarding judgment and salvation. And they have power over the waters, seas, rivers, to turn them into blood, and to strike the earth with every kind of plague as often as they wish. When they have finished their testimony and given their evidence, the beast that comes up out of the abyss, the bottomless pit, will rage, wage war with them and overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies will lie exposed in the open street of the great city Jerusalem, which in a spiritual sense is called by the symbolic and allegorical names of Sodom and Egypt, where also their Lord was crucified. Those from the peoples and tribes and languages and nations look at their dead bodies for three and a half days and will not allow their dead bodies to be laid in a tomb. And those non-believers who live on the earth will gloat over them and rejoice, and they will send gifts in celebration to one another because these two prophets tormented and troubled those who, lived on, who live on the earth. But after three and a half days... The breath of life from God came into them, and they stood on their feet, 
and great fear and panic fell on those who were watching them. And the two witnesses heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, Come up here. Then they ascended into heaven in the cloud, and their enemies watched them. And in that very hour there was a great earthquake, and a tenth of the city fell, and was destroyed. Seven thousand people were killed in the earthquake, and the rest who survived were overcome with terror, and they glorified the God of heaven as they recognized his awesome power. The second woe is past. Behold, the third woe is coming quickly. Now there were notes about this that perhaps this has something to do with the Romans overrunning the temple, but I don't know how much that would apply to all of this. So I did not want to, you know, I mentioned that as something that, that I had read and saw, but then I'm not sure how much that applies to all of this and, you know, just, you know, the two witnesses and all these things. I've not heard that this has already occurred, you know, so I can't say that the two witnesses have already been there and that it's already happened. So, and I have not heard that there was this great earthquake and a tenth of the city fell and 7,000 people were killed. Possibly, but I'm not aware of that happening already. So, and we are talking about in Jerusalem, even though it's also called Sodom and Egypt, making that comparison that they are being sinful and not following the Lord. Which that's the most important thing is that we we need to follow the Lord, even even though we will make mistakes and we will sin. You know, but we need to repent daily and keep following the Lord, you know, picking ourselves up and, and keeping keeping going, you know, every every day, even though we stumble, we fall, we get back up and we keep going. You know, we keep praying, we keep repenting, we keep and we keep trying. We have to be earnestly, honestly trying. We can't just sit back and decide that we're done. All right, so I'm going to move on. Uh, verse 15. Then the seventh angel sounded his trumpet, and there were loud voices in heaven, saying, The kingdom, dominion, rule of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and his Christ, and he will reign forever and ever. And the twenty-four elders who sit on their thrones before God fell face downward and worshipped God, saying, To you we give thanks, O Lord, God Almighty, the Omnipotent, the Ruler of all, who are and who were, because you have taken your great power and the sovereignty, which is rightly yours, and have now begun to reign. And the nations, Gentiles, became enraged, and your wrath and indignation came, and the time came for the dead to be judged, and the time came to reward your bondservants, the prophets and the saints, God's people, and those who fear your name, the small and the great, and the time came to destroy the destroyers of the earth. And the temple of God, which is in heaven, was opened, and the ark of his covenant appeared in his temple. And there were flashes of lightning, loud rumblings, and peals of thunder, and an earthquake, and a great hailstorm. And that is the end of chapter 11. So if we notice here, the elders give thanks to God for taking back dominion and rule of the world. Okay, with the seventh trumpet, the kingdom, dominion, rule of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and his Christ. So, and he will reign forever and ever. So at that point, he's taken back to the absolute rule and authority of the world, which Adam had turned over to Satan way back when. So here... This becomes a part of the kingdom. And we give thanks to God. The elders, you know, they give thanks for him. Thanks to him for doing this. It mentions the nations, Gentiles, became enraged. And I, I think that 
basically, you know, is referring to uh, it's referring to the people in the world who are, are really set against God. You know, it's not really everyone in the world because a lot of us still live here, and of course, it's not us. But there are those who are set against God and against Christ, and they refuse to believe or accept or have anything to do. I mean, it's they're totally set against in enmity against God. So there are those, and um, you know, they're they're enraged. But then, you know, the time came for these things to happen, the dead to be judged, to reward your bondservants and saints, so and to destroy the destroyers of the earth. Notice the destroyers of the earth. That's not us. I just want you to understand the destroyers of the earth. I'm not sure exactly who that implies. Maybe that's people who are totally wasting the resources of the earth that God has given us. I, I'm not 100% sure, but it sounds like they're their own group of people destroy the destroyers of the earth. So, just something to consider and think about, really. Um, maybe it's the, the greedy that, you know, destroy everything just to get what they can out of it and make as much wealth and power as they can. You know, maybe it's that. I, I'm not sure, but... Uh, uh, and like I say, I don't, I don't want to speculate, but it does sound like this is its own group of people that are really destroying the earth. And that is something that we are concerned about nowadays, though I think um, the way they look at it and the way they talk about it is wrong. So I won't get into that either, but, um, but you know, we know that as, as a group of people that live on this earth that we do have an impact on our environment. But I, I don't think as a group that we're all, um, everything we do is destroying our environment. I don't, I don't believe that. So, all right. So that is Revelation chapter 11. I want to thank you for listening. Hope you have a wonderful day. May the Lord bless you and keep you. And remember, God loves you.